All right. So we, in our last video, we talked about our ice box. And in this video, we actually get it working right. So stay tuned. So in the last video, we did a icebox conversion uh, where we added a refrigeration unit to our icebox in our travel trailer. And it didn't work quite as well as I'd wanted to, uh, mostly because there was a leak that came up and also sizing is an issue. So anyway, in this video, what we're doing is uh, we're fixing all of that. So. We have fixed all of that at this point. Um, if the uh, eBay seller that we bought it from, he made uh, he made good on he totally made good for us on the uh, icebox kit, the evaporator plate part. There was a leak on it. Uh, not sure exactly what happened there, but he made good on that. And so I'm going to show you how this is installed uh, on our trailer and. We're gonna test it, and this is our test video. So first and foremost, let's talk about how a refrigeration kit, how a refrigeration unit works. And let's talk about some basic principles. Principle number one is this piece right here. This is really the magic of what, it, what causes the system to work. So this right here is what we call an evaporator plate. What we're doing is we're putting refrigerant into this plate and we're using the heat that's in the box to boil the refrigerant, which in turn helps transmit the temperature or the heat out of the ice box. And so when you start thinking about, about it from that perspective, this right here is just a heat transfer device. And so you put this in the box, this mounts in the box, and it has to be mounted in a particular orientation, so you have to follow the instructions. But this piece right here is where the magic happens. This is where the temperature in your box, the heat, any energy, heat energy that's in your box is used to boil the refrigerant that is in these lines. And then that refrigerant returns back as a gas to the compressor. So in this particular instance, I've mounted the compressor unit over here in a corner and this compressor unit the compressor is actually back there and the a uh, the condenser coil is right there so this piece right here is where your refrigerant gets pumped and where we take the heat that we got out of the ice box and we condense the refrigerant in this coil right here this we have a thermostat here this digital thermostat is what we're gonna to use to monitor the temperature inside the ice box. And also, this right here is going to tell the compressor, which is over there, when to turn on and when to turn off. The compressor is really the only moving part in the system. In the case of this ice box, this is how we have the evaporator mounted. You notice there's spacers that hold it up and off of, and it just fits in here. This is our ice tray, which is still functional. And once that's all working, this stays at a nice 37 degrees. Obviously, so you open the door. If you open the door, you're gonna notice that the temperature is gonna come up a little bit. And you're seeing that right now. So you open the door, yes, temperature will come up. There's no mass of any anything in there right now. So we're just trying to make sure, okay, so the temperature is gonna come up. And that's a good thing because it's going to come up and then it's going to trip the uh, switch to turn it on. Here we go. The temperature has come up to about 38.4. The compressor has kicked on. And now it's going to start circulating cool refrigerant. Now it's important to note it takes some time for the compressor to bring liquid refrigerant to the ice box. So it does take a little bit but this shouldn't go over 39 degrees um, 
Yeah, so hang on. We're going to watch this in... We're going to speed up the cycle time a little bit, I think, maybe, for this video. A second ago, the compressor, it changed in tone. And now you can notice the temperatures are going to start crashing a lot faster. I think that's that's basically that the refrigerant in the ice box is now full, so that condenser plate is now fully full, and so it's moving refrigerant. Just it's, it's a full refrigerant in the in the ice box. Now that the uh, Compressor has shut off, and we're at 37.4 degrees, which is our set temperature in the box. And you'll hear the, you should be able to hear, but the refrigerant is still in the ice box. It's still, you can hear that. The refrigerant is still circulating and boiling off in the ice box. So it's going to boil off for a little bit. And the temperature is actually going to continue to plummet and drop now that the compressor is off. So it'll drop to 30. It's going to drop down. It's 36.8 right now. Um, and we'll see what happens. Take a look at our charge controller off for our solar panel. It's throwing the batteries at 12.3 volts. So the refrigerator has been running pretty much constant, um, trying to maintain. It actually it ran a straight, completely constant for a while as it was trying to maintain the bring the refrigerator down so I actually started this test at 12.4 volts but here we are it's been about a couple hours um, and we're gonna see what it does throughout the night okay so something I should have said about this ice box beforehand is that you need to be able to don't don't just turn it on and expect that it's just gonna work once you get it charged so my system out there um, it's about a five cubic foot box and I'm using a larger, like a 30 by 10, 30 by 10 evaporator coil, but even still it took five hours for the system running to get it even down into the forties. So it's not going to be something that you just turn on and it just works. So I recommend, <coughs> I recommend filling the box with some cold items to give it some mass and then turn it on. That way it has plenty of assistance to get it down. It'll man manage it really, really well, but it takes a long time to get it down to temperature if you are simply just running the thing continuous from 90 degrees, which is where I was at. It was 93 degrees in the box and it took four hours to get it down to a point where it was in the 50s. So. I would recommend, I am going to keep the ice box function of the box, so I would recommend throwing a couple of bags of ice in it, get it to start coming down, and then turn it on. That'll save your battery, um, and then it'll also help it, assist it to get going. There's no point in overworking that thing. You don't want that thing to run just continuous for hours upon hours upon hours. So it's a quarter to one in the morning, and I'm checking on the refrigerator. Keep in mind, this is going to be, this is a pretty, pretty intense test on this system to see how it draws. Because keep in mind, there's nothing in the refrigerator, nothing at all. And so we're just trying to see how well it maintains temperature and see how the battery does. So one o'clock in the morning, we are, all right, it's one o'clock in the morning. The refrigerator's not running right now. Um, but we're seeing it coming up ever so slightly, but we're at 36.8 degrees, which is fine. It's what we want it to do. Sounds like it, sounds like it shut off just recently. And then our battery, which I don't know if you can see, 12.2 volts. This so far. I, it might survive, the battery might survive by itself all night, uh, which means if I add two batteries, we, we just need to see tomorrow what the solar does. So we're going to load this refrigerator for a day, 
I've got some stuff in the house. I'm going to load the refrigerator up with refrigerated goods. We're going to run it all day off the solar and see what the solar does all day keeping this thing going. Right, so it's the morning after. Uh, after doing the test, we did it. We've ran the refrigerator overnight all night. And let's see what we're doing. All right. So here we go. And... 37.4 is our, um, is where we're at, and it's staying. Let's go see. So this is, it is morning. The sun has been up for a little bit, but our charge controller shows we're at 12, 12.1, and the solar panel is now charging back up. So we did get kind of low last night, but that's one group 24 marine battery. And uh, let's see what the capacity on that battery is. All right. So here we are looking at this. It's a reserve capacity of 130 on this battery. So that's what we've, that's what we're dealing with with this system. This is obviously going to mean time for another battery, maybe a second solar panel. Uh, we're only at 120 watts on the solar, so second panel would bring us to about 220 watts, um, and that'll be fine. I think, I think that plus the second battery in the refrigerator is perpetual now. All right, all right, we got some stuff in the ice box to add some mass, and we're going. Oh, let's add a couple more things. We're going to add some mass to it. And we're going to see during the day how this does. So right now the thing had just shut off. Our charging is back up to 12.8 on the solar. Let's see how well she does throughout a day. The refrigerator is holding about 37.9. And... Yeah, I think 12.7. So, I think it's actually, what is it? Yeah, 12.1. So we definitely need to do something about charging. Anyway, so that's our review of the refrigerator, 12 volt refrigerator kit, the icebox conversion kit. It does work. Uh, we have added, I, I forgot to mention that we did add insulation to the icebox, but it does work. Um, and uh, it, doesn't draw a whole ton of power but uh definitely gonna have to upgrade uh, our power generation i think and our battery to two batteries for it to continue in hot weather because it does as it runs in hot weather it does take some power to run but anyway hope you enjoyed this review and uh, go out and enjoy yourselves